welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in yes it's been a while since i have uh, done a youtube video um i've been busy uh i you know admittedly i have been in a bit of a funk um maybe i will get to why uh in another video but I felt compelled to uh, make this video for you guys today. I really just was in the mood to do some figure studies and I would typically do these kinds of figure studies using uh, just pencil or ballpoint pen, but I really was curious to try doing these studies in watercolors. I think I have used watercolors uh, to do figure studies in art school back when I had figure drawing classes, but I've never really uh, tried doing them on my own uh, with watercolors. It's just not something that I've ever really reached for, but for some reason I felt really compelled to do them in watercolors this time. So that is what this video is about and I will be sharing just some of the thoughts that I had along the way and some of the lessons that I took away from this exercise. So the photos that I used for this video, they are from a reference pack by Graffiti Studio. I have mentioned Graffiti Studio in the past. Um, they make uh, reference packs like this one. The pack that I used for today's video is called 290 plus academic male pose reference pictures for artists. I will link it down below in the description so uh, you can go check it out. Um, I really like this one because the model is you know he has great muscle definition so it's really great if you are uh, looking to study the muscles and the lighting is also really great for the kind of study that i wanted to do because i really wanted to focus on on the lighting aspect with the watercolors so i highly recommend checking out graffiti studio if you uh, would like to do studies like this it just makes it so much easier they have so many great reference packs available and if you do decide to check them out make sure to use my coupon code chrishong20 for 20% off any of their reference packs i'll uh, leave all the information down below in the description box so to do these studies i uh, went ahead and sketched out the poses in advance in pencil because I knew once I got into the watercolor portion then I would find it kind of annoying to switch back to pencil and then back to watercolor so I just went ahead and drew out all the poses so that they were just ready to go with the watercolors and when I drew them I didn't really worry too much about uh, bringing out all the muscle definition or anything like that because I knew that I'd be going in to define that with the watercolors. So I try to keep the drawing pretty simple um, but they still took me quite a while to do. I think I think you guys should know that by now. I'm pretty um, slow when it comes to doing anything in art. I mostly try to get the gesture of the pose and the um, silhouette and the proportions right instead of worrying about any of the like internal uh, drawing details and then once I had all of them drawn I uh, went in with the watercolors and I decided to pick a single color to use for the shadows I picked the color Prussian blue it's a color that uh, activates really easily with water um, so it's like really quick for me to grab uh, on my palette and it's a very like powerful blue color uh, so it's kind of satisfying to work with for working out the shadows um, and yeah it's just I don't know it's just like a really striking color it's easy to use and how I approach these is I went in and carved out the shadows um, to start and I really try to see the overall 
big shadow statement of the figure instead of getting lost in all the little shadow shapes that I was seeing like along all the muscle definition. For example, for the first pose, I just put the entire back in shadow to start. Even though I could make out all the little individual muscles in the back, I really try to see the overall statement of the whole back being in shadow. Trying to see the figure as like a simple shape and then seeing the overarching shadow pattern instead of getting lost in the smaller, less significant forms. Because I am learning that if I get too bogged down by trying to define every little muscle, then I lose sight of that overarching shadow statement. So that's really what I was trying to focus on in this exercise, really trying not to get uh, distracted by all the little muscle definition, but trying to see the limbs as a cylinder or something or you know trying to see the body as these simple forms so that i could just unanimously put the whole leg in shadow and then uh, once i had achieved that larger shadow statement then i could go in and uh, try to bring out the certain nuances that i was seeing within the shadow um, if I wanted to. So once I had established the like internal shadow shape of the figure, then I went in to carve out the light shape by um, painting into the background, or in other words, the negative shapes. And that was really satisfying to do, but I had to be mindful of um, making sure to to just pick one or two areas of the pose to do that because it was creating a lot of contrast. And um, I realized that with these with these figure studies, it is a much more appealing statement overall if it just has one or two areas of focus. Because if I were to uh, try to make crisp light shapes um, all over the figure, I think then the background would feel really flat because they would all be the same kind of dark value and there wouldn't be an area of focus in the pose. Uh, so that's something I had to be mindful of going in and painting in the background. You'll notice that I don't paint all the background. I only paint the background um, selectively when I really want that strong sense of light on whatever part of the figure that I'm trying to highlight. And then with the internal shadow shapes filled in and then the light shapes carved out, uh, then I would glaze over some orange for uh, bringing some local color into the skin. And I did do this a bit strategically so that I could create a bit more a uh, sense of separation from the limbs that I wanted uh, coming forward into the camera and then the limbs that I wanted to go further back into space. And, and I think playing with color temperature like that really helps to sell that illusion of uh, space and depth even more um, along with the values. And then once I had established the big shadow shape and um, painted in some of the background to bring out some of the light shape and had established some of the local colors, uh, and then I could go in and try to define the anatomy a little bit more. And this whole exercise for me was really a lot of fun in, in flexing my muscle memory, my memory of muscles. That's because uh, going in and carving out the shadow shape, uh, it's really helpful if you understand what kind of shadow shapes those muscles create. Because those muscles along the form, it creates certain like breaks in that line, that line between light and shadow. So if you understand what kind of shadows uh, are created by the muscles, then you have a better understanding how to draw that shadow shape. And um, for me, it was really satisfying to 
be like, well, I know how the deltoid inserts into the arm and creates this kind of triangular shape that breaks from this line along the arm here. And um, just being able to flex that knowledge, I found really just fun and satisfying. Even though I don't remember uh, most of the names of these muscles, I have a lot of years having done figure drawing and so I have just ingrained what these uh, shadow shapes look like and um, so it's really fun doing these studies and recognizing uh, these shapes on the figure and bringing them out and seeing what kind of difference it makes in my drawing uh, being able to indicate these little bits of knowledge uh, because yes, it does really make a difference. It makes the figure look a lot more believable. Um, it makes the muscles feel a lot more just like tangible and real. And, and for me, that's really the fun aspect of doing these figure studies. It's, it's part, you know, part learning, part building that muscle memory and uh, part building your like visual library or whatever. And part like, yeah, flexing your knowledge a little bit too. It's like, ha, huh, I know this. Ha, huh, I know that. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Of course, this exercise also uh, made me realize, you know, the muscles that I don't really have a very good grip on, for example, um, I definitely need to brush up on my knowledge of the back muscles and the like abdominal, like front muscles. Basically the whole upper body, minus the arms. The arms, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of the arm muscles, but oh boy, the back muscles. I don't know what is going on in the back. And um, all those little muscles like along the rib cage, I, I think what's tough about it is that they're kind of very like small right they're smaller shapes there's a definite like rhythm to those muscles but i don't have like the best way to draw them i don't have like a go-to way to draw those muscles like the i think they're called the serratus anterior muscles those muscles like along your rib cage I don't have a way to draw them in a, an appealing way. So for these studies, I would just pick out like a couple here and there. And that's really all you need. Like I, I know that I don't need to highlight every single muscle that I, that I know is there. But um, yeah, just something that I, uh, you know, made a mental note to myself. Like, oh, I need to brush up on my knowledge of the muscles of the torso and the back because I don't readily know like what kind of shapes to draw uh, for those shadow shapes. My favorite poses ended up being the second one and the third one. I think um, the second one, I really liked the amount of contrast that I was able to achieve along the top of the figure. That was the point in the figure that had the most um just like interest and so that's where i wanted it to feel really punchy and i i feel like i achieved that with the contrast and the color temperature and just being able to control the contrast in the other areas of the figure the third pose i found it really tricky actually because what is in focus is the leg that is out in front and um, yeah, it was just tricky trying to make sure these limbs don't look all like tangled up. There is a clear separation between, you know, the two arms that are like crossed together and then the two legs that are kind of overlapping one another. Uh, yeah, something that I, I realized doing these studies is, uh, I don't know if it's just with watercolor, but um, I feel like it's really, uh, like you have to just pick one limb to highlight. They can't all be the star, you know, like you gotta pick one arm over the other. You gotta pick one leg over the other. 
I guess it really depends on the pose, but like basically all the poses that I've drawn here, I kind of went in with that mentality of just highlighting one of the limbs, like one arm, not both, one leg, not both, uh, because I found that to be the most appealing statement. Instead of trying to make every hand and every foot and every leg and arm uh, the focal point. So I found it like a really fun challenge to try to like separate the limbs from one another with the level of contrast and with color temperature while still like defining them enough so they like exist. <laughs> but yeah, I, for me it was like a really fun problem solving challenge. Uh, and looking at these poses now, like I, I, I honestly think I did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm pretty happy, especially again with the second and the third pose, um, especially the arms on the third pose. Um, that one I was really worried about, but um, by putting that one entire arm uh, in the blue, like in shadow. And then having that hand underneath coming out towards us in the camera, having that light shape on it and then the darkest shadow uh, shape creating that like really strong pop of contrast, I think really helps separate that, that hand and that arm from the rest. These figure studies, there are so many elements to juggle, but I really think that's part of the fun. So something that I picked up while carving out these shadows in watercolor, I found it kind of appealing to uh, keep the shadow a like a single kind of continuous shape as opposed to uh, creating all kinds of little shadow shapes. I guess that goes back to trying to see the figure in terms of like simple forms and trying to see that overarching shadow pattern as opposed to breaking it down into like little shadows. I guess it kind of goes back to that. But I realized if I made a single continuous shadow shape as I was carving out these shapes, it did a better job of describing the forms than if I had gone in uh, and uh, tried bringing out all the little shadows of the muscles. I wasn't able to do that with one of the poses. It was the the fourth one I did where the figure is pulling on the rope and with that one I had a hard time seeing that overarching shadow pattern so I went in and started carving out all the like the smaller muscles and I think that's why um, that one I don't like as much because it feels a bit disjointed um, and it doesn't feel quite as impactful. The shadows feel a little bit all over the place in that one and therefore uh, there isn't like a clear clear sense of focus. I wanted the arm pulling on the rope to to be in focus but I think the way I distributed the values, it just doesn't really feel quite as punchy as the other ones. So yeah, that's something that I picked out when I was carving out the shadow shapes is uh, try to kind of connect and find that big, big overarching shadow shape, uh, that one kind of continuous shadow shape um, for the entire figure. And I think your lighting statement will be better for it. So again, I had a ton of fun with these studies. I, uh, I did feel they were a little bit self-indulgent for me <laughs> in being able to uh, just like test my own uh, knowledge of these muscles. I just find it so satisfying to carve out those shadow shapes and seeing how that, how just something so simple can create, I don't know, this like illusion of depth and space on on the two-dimensional page like i find it so magical in a way to see these forms and and these figures come to life on the page it seems so simple but 
I really love just seeing forms come to life on the page and so this was a really fun exercise for me and I honestly don't know why it took me so long to try doing it yeah I, I never really thought to paint the full figure in watercolors but it was definitely a different mindset and approach than painting portraits in watercolors and so I will definitely continue to do these kinds of exercises more going forward because I found it really fun and really helpful and even though yes it's kind of similar to how I approach doing these figure studies in pencil or in pen I feel like watercolor really forces me to concentrate on seeing those value relationships and seeing the lighting statement uh, as opposed to getting bogged down by the anatomy and the drawing aspect which I uh, tend to do with uh, pencil and pen just because of the nature of those materials so yeah I definitely definitely want to do this again and I really hope you enjoyed seeing me do these figure studies and if you would like to see more of these then definitely let me know and I will do more for you guys. If you want to do these studies on your own then definitely uh, go check out Griffey Studio and make sure to use my coupon code chrisong20 for 20% off all of their reference packs. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know down below which pose is your favorite. I really appreciate when I get comments from you guys and um, reading through some of your comments honestly is really what motivates me to continue to make these YouTube videos. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to write a comment. Let me know if you like this video by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in my next video bye